Hey everyone, Commander Josh Hawkins here. And at the time of sending you this broadcast, this is the view from my cockpit. Parked just a few light years from the remains of a beautiful supernova remnant. Extremely rare and difficult to find, this one was located just a little over 800 light years from the Hypio Prow Nebula I just finished surveying. Unfortunately, it was already discovered, which doesn't seem to surprise me much anymore. With over 65,000 light years traveled so far, I've only come across one undiscovered planetary nebula along the way. And I have a feeling that by the time I return home to sell my data in nine months from now, it's very likely that some other commander will have already beat me to the punch. I can only cross my fingers and hope that my little discovery remains hidden that long and I get to tag my name onto at least one of these little nebulous gems. But who knows how many more I might find along the way. The galaxy is a big place after all, and there's bound to be more undiscovered nebula out there that I can still mark as my own. In my last broadcast, I said I would transmit you some images from within the Hypio Prow Nebula. Unfortunately, my data recorders were set to live broadcast mode, so none of it was archived in my ship's computers. However, if the live broadcast was received on your end, it's possible that the footage may be archived in your receiving array's data storage. My transmission logs indicate that roughly six hours worth of footage was transmitted live, so I'm sure there's plenty of interesting things to see there. If you've received my previous broadcasts, then you're aware that almost 10,000 light years ago, I located and retrieved an escape pod occupied by an astrobiologist named Shannon Day, whose recorded logs I've been deciphering and including along with my science transmissions in hopes that someone back home receives this information and knows that she's alive and well. While I knew that her ship had clearly suffered a major malfunction and was destroyed as a result, she was fortunate enough to escape the accident by entering an escape pod and putting herself into cryostasis. But the circumstances surrounding that accident have not been entirely clear until today. The details I'm about to reveal in this transmission are alarming and reveal a plot that may have far-reaching consequences that even I am concerned about. These are the final log entries from her pod. Commander's Log, Day 16. I haven't slept in over 36 hours. I'm exhausted and scared, but I'm trying to keep it together. The ship's functions continue to degrade, and each system failure seems to have a cascading effect on all its subsystems. I've lost control of navigation, and yet the ship continues to jump itself into hyperspace, despite my best efforts to shut down the frameshift drive. <coughs> I have no idea how much fuel remains, but with no way to stop the ship from jumping again. It's, it's, it's only a matter of time now. Everything I've tried in order to stabilize the ship's systems just seems to make it worse. <coughs> These ships are supposed to be built with redundant systems built on top of redundant systems. The safety protocols were established over a hundred years ago. A catastrophic system-wide failure of this nature is supposed to be impossible, especially with a brand new ship like the Diamondback Explorer. I've started a manual transfer of my logs into the escape pod, along with as much data as I was able to salvage from my scans of the artifact and my personal notes. I'm hoping that this will be a last resort, but I've rigged the escape pod for long-term cryostasis with a salvage power cell from my SRV, which luckily wasn't affected by the ship's systems failure. But I have to keep trying to stop the ship. If I don't, the chances of rescue this far out of the bubble are almost... Well... No, I have to keep trying to stop the ship. Main fuel tank drained. This is Shannon Day, commander of the Diamondback Explorer Janeway. This is my final log entry. My current position is unknown. 
from my estimates, I'm roughly 18,000 light years from Seoul. My ship has suffered cascading system-wide failure and I'm incapable of regaining navigational control. The ship has just exited hyperspace and has run out of fuel. Its momentum has mean free fall towards the primary star in the system. I have only minutes left of remaining life support and my only chance at survival is to put myself in cryostasis and hope for a rescue. Dad, if this message reaches you, I just want you to know that- If you're listening to this, Shannon, then it's nearly over for you. What? I'm so sorry. What is this? If you hadn't figured, this is Soja. I'm the one to blame for your fate, because I am a weak man. I have only a short time to record this message to you, because as I speak, you are just ten meters away from me, sitting in your canopy, while I huddle in one of your ship's maintenance ducts. You're waiting for me to say over comms that the scanner I've just fitted is ready to be tested, which it is, of course, otherwise I wouldn't be recording this message. What I want to tell you is to leave this ship and never return. I want to say that, but I can't, because if I do, my parents will be killed. Killed just like they killed Marietta, and I, I can't be responsible for that. I tell myself that it'll be all right, that you have an escape pod, so your life won't be over, just paused. I try to imagine one day a noble explorer discovering your ship, scooping you up and transporting you back to safety. My parents wouldn't get the same chance, and that's how I tell myself that I'm doing the right thing. That's how I'll try to sleep at night. But I still have nightmares of your ship following the wrong course recording junk navigation data, and eventually, one day, suffering a fatal malfunction, leaving you drifting in space or on a planet somewhere. E even if I allow myself to dream of your rescue, I'll imagine your escape pod being sold to the highest bidder and you becoming one of the Imperial indentured. I can't forgive myself for what I've done, so I won't ask you to forgive me. Please know that I will hope every day for your safe return. Now, I must go complete my deception, and with it, my descent into the darkest places, from which I do not deserve ever to be rescued. Sosha? Oh no! What at first seemed to be a ship malfunction caused by the unknown artifact she'd taken on board has proven to be something a lot more sinister. From her previous logs, I gathered that Sosha was working for Canon Interstellar Research. But they're a science organization. Who would threaten them, and why would Sosha sabotage her ship? Why was it so important that Shannon be left to die in the cold depths of space? I wish I could just wake her up from her cryostasis, but I don't have the proper medical equipment or the experience to bring someone out of cryosleep safely, and I can't risk her life any further. It's clear that something she knows is important enough to kill her for in order to keep it a secret. But that secret will remain frozen in her escape pod until I return home. In the meantime, I need to take additional precautions in order to ensure my own safety. Since I've been sending data packets off with my locations, it wouldn't be that hard for an interested party to find us if they were set on finishing the job Sosha started. If my estimates are right, from the time my first transmission was sent back with information on Shannon Day, a ship could very well intercept me in only a couple of weeks based on my transmitted locations. Luckily, I travel armed. Having been a combat pilot myself, I had a hard time outfitting an exploration vessel that had no weapons. I mean, let's be realistic. There are roughly 400 billion star systems in our galaxy, and even if you take a conservative estimate, there would be at least 40 billion planets orbiting their stars within the habitable zone. How many of those could harbor intelligent species capable of space travel? And of those alien species, how many would be hostile? As a single explorer roaming the galaxy, my chances of an encounter of this sort are highly unlikely. But it's a risk nonetheless, and one that I would rather be prepared for. Because anyone who's ever piloted a ship has heard whispers of Thargoids. Are they real? Will they ever come back? 
Hopefully the answer to that is something that I won't have to find out firsthand on the opposite side of the galaxy. But here's something I do know. Anyone who comes out here looking to finish off Shannon Day and take out this ship is going to wish they stayed home. This is Commander Josh Hawkins, signing off. I hope you enjoyed this installment in the series. If you did, please click the like button and don't forget to subscribe.